Hi everyone and welcome back to this week's episode of Fight Chat Friday from TKD Coach Academy. This week we're going to look at going to hands and especially what follows on to maximize the score after you go to hands. So if that sounds interesting to you and that's something that you need to add to your game, stay with us for this one. Hey everybody, welcome back to this week's episode. So we did cover in a previous episode different variations of shots that people tend to look at. So we will put this clip up in the top corner here. So if that's interesting, check that out. So the idea is how are we going to finish after hands? So we call these exit shots. So exiting out of contact with hands after a punching exchange to find the kick on the way out. So we have looked at it from the point of view of what shots you can do and what options you can do. So today we're going to look at it a little bit of a different way. So some ways that people get this off, mm. um, some reasons why they don't, and also some, let's say, kind of like nuances that people are able to find ways to fit that in a little bit better. And also the difference between team and individual, which is an interesting little find that Adrian came up on. Yeah, it's just something that we were, uh, you know, as we were looking for the clips for this, sometimes you'll find patterns or you'll come to a little realization. So we'll share that with everybody a little later in the video. Um, but first of all, maybe let's start with a bit of a breakdown of uh, those follow on shots and uh, a few full examples and slow mos from the most recent Europeans. So let's kick into that one. So what we have noticed from some of these clips is that the turning kick or the Dolly Chaggy is one of the bigger ones that we see. Um, so it, people are able to set their feet much better if they're able to get this off. Now, um, we will see most of the time that it is coming over the blind side towards the head or it's going to the body. So there's a few different variations people have. But you notice a lot of time it's that sprint blitz that sets this up. So here's Timothy Boss, and he's just launching in, then stops. So he puts like a quick stop and puts the brakes on. That creates And then the space. that allows him exactly a little bit of space to find that shot. And of course, if you can find that headshot, it's a great clear distinguisher for the referees to get you three points clearer. And I think the, the real uh, question is, uh, you know, you have to make a couple of quick analysis. So uh, what side facing have we? Uh, and that will tend to let you know what's open. And then the second thing is, yeah, what shot works depending on the space. And the space is a critical factor. Yeah, and the two guys here, example, what they're looking to do is exit much faster than the other person. So it's like a draw who can get to the hands first and who can exit first out of contact. So you notice people aren't too keen anymore to keep punching and go, 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 go. They're looking to exit as fast as possible to get the legs. So we see here is a nice way to exit out of the corner. And the way that you can just bring that up around on the blind side is a nice way. So if you have that ability on the, let's say, your mobility and stuff like that, it's definitely a good one to check out. Absolutely. Uh, as you said, the, the turning kick, by far and away, the most common follow-on shot from the hands. And, you know, it, probably because... It's an easy shot to find. It's flexible and versatile in terms of being able to go to the body or the head. Most people can throw that shot off their left and their right leg. You know, it's mm -hmm. not one that's a, you know, necessarily a higher skill shot. So as long as the flexibility is there, you know, you're kind of good to go. But the, uh, the, the issue that we're finding, I suppose, now is there has to be a little bit of leeway given by the referee to allow for enough continuation to get to it. And it certainly works best if you can create movement from your opponent. If you can either find an angle or a little bit of distance, it makes that follow on much more uh, viable as a shot. And here's a great example of the angle here from mm -hmm. Blue. So you see he gets the angle, which allows him the space to fit in the kick. A lot of time as well, it's not your traditional turning kick, let's say. So here's a good example of that, where he's just swinging the leg up. So once that foot makes contact, that's all you want. So like perfect technique is not actually ideal here because of the, the distance usually being so close. Absolutely. Um, you know, we've mentioned the other shots that are possible. I mean, it's certainly a back kick can often be thrown, a downward kick or a hacks kick or a, like a retreating hook kick can sometimes be thrown. But if you're to say, you know, when you're thinking about your, your bread and butter, it is 90% plus of, of the time it's a turning kick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially the one that lands. A lot of time, like, there's shots thrown. And mm. although they mo might, like, 
stop the opponent from progressing is not really a score. Um, so we will see variations of the turning kick most of the time. Um, yeah. One of the things that we've seen there in a clip two clips ago was the, the idea of when you're getting the momentum, it's very crucial because usually it's hard for you to fit in the follow-on kick if you don't have that forward momentum. So that's the most important part if you're looking to get the hands. Yeah, and just follow on. And just as you were saying, Richie, um, although some of the other shots are thrown, the one that lands tends to be the turning kick. And uh, I found an interesting one with all of the clips that I went through over the last day or so. Um, the reverse turning kick is thrown quite a few times as you know somebody tries to find their way out. But it only tends to make contact in all of the examples that I found after the referee's already called Hecho and the attacking competitor has stopped pressing the momentum. That's a very interesting one, yeah. So, because we do see it a lot, don't we? And people yeah. go for it. They yeah. go for it, but it's it's interesting when you look at it, how many you're scoring. Uh, it's a very, very low percentage simply because it, it usually requires the, atta- the the person who is pushing forward to stop and create the space for you to do it. So I think it'll be very interesting to see more of it as an attacking continuation. So where the person who had the forward momentum slips into the band or allows the space to develop so they can throw the band But, you know, that isn't something we see as That's often. That's actually very interesting because in the whole time that I've ever sparred competitively, I've done that once. Yeah. And it was when the referee was just saying hecho. So I think that actually <laughs> is a, a nice, nice find from you. It's an interesting one. So uh, one of the issues that we do find, though, in terms of making that dodio super effective is people fall into patterns. They get set in their ways about how they do it. And what that means is they're not really paying attention to the environment that's developing. And, you know, it it does mean, there there we have that uh, that reverse turning kick. It's a miss, but it's still a great idea. But uh, we start to see that same thing going. So let me see, uh, because that definitely isn't the the clip that we want to illustrate the, um, uh, uh, the continuation. Let me just have a quick look and we'll find that one. Yeah, one good thing about this clip, though, as we Yeah, we get to talk about that is the fact that like maybe timothy boss isn't scoring here but he is creating a threat which allows his opponent to not come back and fire back instantly which gets sure. a bit more forward momentum so that is another good point that you want to be focusing on when you're looking for this kind of an idea so this is just leaning into the idea of start right finish right and you know it does make sense because they you know sweden is sparring right leg in, in front and italy is sparring right leg in front so the opportunity more often than not will emerge on that right hand side But we very often find as we look through it, uh, competitors will, regardless of the distance, regardless of the facing, the change, you know, maybe the opponent made a step back or a change of legs somewhere in the midst of the interaction. They'll end up throwing that uh, that same shot each time because that's how they finish. That's their that's their go to, and it sometimes means you're missing out on a nice blindside shot or you're kicking directly into guard. And, you know, it's just one of those things that, you know, to be very aware of in your training, are you setting yourself into an unbreakable pattern um, of always picking the same shot, whether or not it's there? It's, it actually is something that I try to look at when I'm in the in the chair coaching of what side is open on the opponent, let's say, because it, it, w- it will usually be the same side. So you don't want to be kicking to the back and give them minus points and things like that. So it is very important to be aware of it. And one of the reasons why it usually changes from the original stance is because if you get forward momentum, somebody, the opponent will usually for a split second, like we see right here, goes to almost like a parallel stance to be mm. able to adjust their stance and their body weight which usually means that they're going to change their body facing to the opposite side at least for a split second before they get the balance again so yeah it's a it's a it's a good thing to be aware of not just launching the kick that you're actually looking and visibly picking the correct side and the correct shot and this one just included by way of example um you know where particularly uh Bian in uh, in blue um you know very very awake and aware and looking at the opportunities as they develop and finding the shot which sometimes requires some very interesting footwork some pivots you know a change of leg a switch uh, a switch back you know things like that and you know this this is absolutely you know reacting to uh to a real game state looking at where his opponent is and making a very very good reaction in the moment and the the important thing from our perspective i think always uh are we talking about that band uh the, the important thing from our perspective is that when you're training if your training isn't representative and it's too much patterning on pads we end up with problem a mm-hmm. but if there's more Definitely. representativeness in your training and you're doing more lifestyle environments you'll be able to react better and make the appropriate decisions as in example b 
Yeah, because we don't want to just become robots and, okay, you have to make two punches and then a left leg turning kick every single time because yeah. that's not always going to be the situation. So it's important that your training does have situations with, which adapt and make you make decisions correctly because decision making is the most important part of a dynamic interaction such as like sparring. Absolutely. So the one thing that, you know, an, an absolutely accidental find, uh, because what happened was we started looking at clips. I realized, OK, I haven't looked too much at the team sparring from the last Euros. Let's see if I can find some examples from the team sparring. And I watched four full matches in team sparring. Uh, so all five matches, 40, so 20, 20 spars and found very little example of continuation. Um, so what struck me as we uh, as we did that is you realize there's far more mismatching in uh yeah. you know as we go into the the team spars um so again we're, we're looking at you know italy sweden here and we do have some examples of it um and, and and i've used that because it does exist but there was uh i think an entire match where we had i think ireland against uh against poland and there's hardly a single thing um opportunity to to develop that uh, that turning kick or that follow-on shot because you know we have these mismatches and they're played almost as points points matches looking to get that first score pull a lot more maybe develop a, an advantage from that and you know uh or, or if you get the lead early it's then playing defensive we're not looking to you know uh, because two minutes is a is a time frame where if you can get a lead in the first minute, you might decide to to hold on to it and play, mm -hmm. you know, negatively for a minute. Um, it depends on the game state. So yeah, it, it it just it was incredible how little there was actually a scoring follow on. And this is the match where I, pr I probably found you know of the four that I watched, the, the maybe the matches were close enough that it, it it came into it. The referees are stepping in a little quicker when there's a big mismatch. You know, so once the bigger person maybe gets to hands or once someone gets to hands, they're quickly stepping it in before the heavy con heavier contact starts. And so there's no opportunity for this extra kick to develop. Yeah, that's a good find because it does make a lot of sense because most people are going to be looking for mismatches in their team sparring. So it's going to be a smaller guy looking to use their speed against somebody who's bigger. And then on the flip side, somebody who's bigger who can control and maintain the distance. So yeah. when there is that further distance, it is harder to bypass that range to get the hands. And then by the time you get and bypass that range, there's a good chance that they're already after recognizing it by then, which potentially will stop the option for a follow on. Plus, you have mm -hmm. the idea of the referee stepping in as well, just for fear of any big injury in a, in a big mismatch in terms of size. Absolutely. So it's just something to consider in terms of your training. So the first thing being definitely have a representative environment with lots of open style sparring to help you find the right side for your follow on. The second thing being, you know, look at opportunities to create, create momentum or movement uh, or to let space develop. And that might mean shifting or splitting your rhythm uh, to let the space develop between you and your opponent. Um, and then take again that Neil Ernest uh, philosophy of first in, last, uh, first in, first out that uh, you kind of have that you want to be the one deciding you know yes we're getting in it gives you the best chance of having the finishing shot if you're reacting to your opponent attacking you really really difficult to be the one who's finishing with the the planned or more deliberate finishing shot so what have we got for our members this week yeah so we're going to be looking at some sparring training sessions that we've been doing this week so we're going to get stuck into that and show you exactly what we've been doing behind the scenes this week and next week in our member section as well. So it gives people a bit of time to get involved if they enjoyed this particular episode. We're actually going to cover this topic in a live training session. So how do you bring all the stuff that we talk about today and bring that into your training environment to work on this particular aspect of the game, which for me, it's one of the things right now that the guys at the very, very top and the ladies, of course, that are winning are extremely successful at. So it is something that you need to be focused on fantastic that's us then for this week and hope you enjoyed that we will see you next friday i see you in the next one